Hello YouTube and welcome to the next text launch video with a brand new Apple iPhone XR or XR, whatever you would like to call it. We are going to do the setup now, insert our nano SIM card, then run through the setup, uh, then check out what about the display, how bright it is, what about the quality and all the talks between the PPI numbers, the IPS LCD quality on the one side on the XR or on the XR and then compare it. Uh, with the with um, OLED quality and the higher resolution quality on the other Apple devices nowadays. Then uh, how much free storage do we got? What about camera quality? What about face ID and all those things? So we start by grabbing the SIM card tray tool. There's one inside the box. I take my own. The slot is on the right down uh, lower side. It's on the XR. So just put in, slide the tray out, and yes, even the XR is uh, dual SIM ready, but not in combination. And now grab your SIM card, chip up, corner down right, and then slide it back inside the device. What I wanted to say is, yes, it is dual SIM ready. Okay, let's push the on off button here first so that it can boot. Uh, and there we go. Push it until you see the app logo. There were no vibrations on the device. So yes, it is dual able, uh, dual SIM able, but uh, not with du two SIM cards, but with one SIM card and one e SIM card. So one embedded SIM card into the device, uh, which is not available with every carrier. So this is one thing you have to uh, check out. So there we are. Swipe up to open. There is no more home button on the XR or that's 10R. So you swipe up to get. This is your normal. Normally you would press the home button and now swiping up, this is your new home button gesture. Choose your language, I now choose English, I'm in Germany right now, so I choose Germany. Then if I get another iOS device nearby, an iPhone or an iPad, I can uh, use it to transfer some of the settings over to the new device. But I say no, thank you, I set it up manually. If I could be able to hit the button, oh, I had it. Then next step, I could skip the Wi-Fi network setup and use my mobile data connection. But I'm in range of a Wi-Fi, so I select my Wi-Fi and enter my Wi-Fi password. Then I get some information about data and privacy. I have to hit continue. Then I can set up Face ID, which I'm going to do. So just put your face into the circle and then roll your head once, roll your head twice. And then you are done. So let's get started. There we go. I hold it into the circle. I'm moving my head. Maybe you can see this here. So this is step one. Okay. Now I have to confirm it. Do it another time. One and I should be done. So second face ID scan is completed. Uh, face ID is set up. Then I need a passcode in case uh, my face is not recognized. Something is wrong. Some other person has to unlock my device. You can choose another option. I choose a four-digit code, which is faster. Okay, this is not secure, I know, but use it anyway. So this is that. Now the device is safe. Now it gets to the point where I can restore a backup. Maybe it's a cloud and on my iTunes, on my on my desktop PC or notebook or whatever. So offline or set it up uh, as a new device. This is what I'm going to do. And I even can transfer data from an Android device. But I want to know how much free storage do we got at this device. Then I have to enter my Apple ID and my Apple ID password. Then if you have two-factor authentication enabled, you get a push notification on another Apple device where you have to enter, the, uh, where you see a code that you have to insert here. Then confirm the terms and conditions. You have to agree to this. You can't skip it. Next question, keep your iPhone up to date. Do you want to uh, enable automatically updates for the iOS version? This is so and so. I would recommend it, yes. Even if, if, if you're a pro, you don't have to use it. But if you don't really care about updates and just activate it and to 99% of the time nothing will happen, the, auto, uh, uh, the updates that Apple roll out uh, will be fine. Next question, local services. Yes, I want to enable this because I want to see where I am, use some th features like maps, even find my iPhone um, to be able to track it. Now, screen time, set it up in later settings. Um, let's say continue. Yes, do I want to share analytics with Apple? No, thank you. Then the new True Tone display, or well, not new, but it's, um, you can use this. 
but you can't do set it up. It's automatically turned on so that it's nice on your eyes. Um, you can uh, you, now. You, I don't know why Apple is doing this because they only show you this is with True Tone, this is without True Tone. You have to deactivate it later in the settings. And yes, the True Tone feature will cost a, some percentage of battery life because the display and the cameras and the Embry light sensors are always checking and always adjusting to the light surrounding the iPhone. So display zoom, okay. Now I can choose between standard and zoomed and then uh, just get some examples here how I want to use it. Standard is fine with me. Then I get an instruction how to use the home button or the swipe gesture, how to switch between apps and how to access uh, controls. So there we are. So swipe up and here we go. And the first thing I notice, of course, with the yellow device, we get a yellow back uh, wallpaper. The second thing is um, that all Apple Works and iLife apps are pre-installed. So keynote numbers, pages, but also the big apps like GarageBand and iMovie. So this will definitely cost you some storage on the, on the device. So let's head over to settings and then scroll down until I find the point general iPhone storage and I see that even with all those apps 10.7 gigabytes are, on, are only used but now check it out GarageBand plus iMovie plus Keynote this is at least 1 2.7 these are at least 4 gigabytes of big Apple apps that are pre-installed which you can get rid of so no problem at all and then you're just Let's say seven gigabytes or even yeah, seven gigabytes I use. So this is a fantastic number here above 55 gigabytes of bytes of the 64 gigabyte version of the basic model are used. And this is plenty enough in my opinion. So this is no problem at all. I still think a lot of you will be happy with the standard basic model here. So, but on the other side, paying only in Europe at 60 euros, 60 euros more for double the storage. For Apple, this is a fantastic number. So this is something, yes, I'm pretty sure, yes, this is money you can't spend. Yes, I would, yeah. But still, I think it's always easier to say, get more storage so that you're at the safe side and then I'm at the safe side, on the safe side because people are not screaming at me. Why did you didn't tell me I should get more storage here? So yes, but still, in my opinion, 64 gigabyte is definitely enough for above 80% of you guys out there. And even the 128 gigabyte version is enough for 95% of you guys. So next step, let's check out the display. Let's turn up the brightness to max and woo, I have to say nice display brightness. Even though, uh, even the, the whole display is a nice looking display. I know a lot of people are screaming, hey, it's not a full HD resolution display. Yeah, I don't care about full resolution. We got above 320 ppi pixel per inch. Uh, the display looks sharp. The colors look good, good. The viewing angles are okay. So I'm definitely not complaining here. Let's turn off the, the auto lock feature or turn the timer up. But what I wanted to do is, uh, I let me grab my, my OLED device here put on up the brightness also at maximum and then you can see may oh we still got uh, true tone deactivated so let's deactivate true tone so now true tone is deactivated on both devices i have to say yes the oled display on the 10 10s and 10s max are brighter it's you yes, they're also a little bit colder and the colors of course they are more vivid it's an oled display of course there are some differences there. but in comparison Still, the IPS display here is, is totally fine with me. So no problems, problems at this point here. So this is that. Now, uh, next step, what can we do? Um, face ID. Okay, let's, let's start with the basic stuff here. So I just look at it, it's unlocked, I swipe up. And we are there. Um, sadly, you can't deactivate this um, the swiping up gesture to unlock the device. I know on the new Huawei Mate 20 Pro devices you can it, but um, and yes, you can double tap to wake it on and then just swipe. And first impression, Face ID just works fine. Next step, camera. Do you want to uh, allow the camera access to GPS? Yes, I turn live pictures off because I don't need that. And now we check out, ooh, there was a delay, but this is just here taking some quick and dirty pictures. 
And the quality, even though this, I was moving the device in my hand, oh, this is definitely nice picture quality. This is something, this is just a nice shooter. And yes, the main camera got OIS. We got a 12 megapixel sensor. And we got all the features like on the on the other uh, on the big iPhones. So um, you still get smart HDR. And another thing that really bothers me: you have to go into the settings and scroll down until you find the camera app. And there and only here you can uh, change the formats and resolution of the way you record videos, for example. And I, and yes, you can record 4K 60 frames. I choose 4K 30 frames. And all the other settings you can you can choose here, and the so recording how you feel most comfortable, uh, compatible choosings, and like um, do you want to record stereo sound? Do you want a grid? I always want a grid, and what you do with the pictures and how to save them, and this is something that's definitely missing in the main camera app here. But what I wanted to show you is portrait camera, um, which only works here with faces. The dual cameras on the 10, 10s and 10s Max, you can also use to, to take portrait pictures with this nice depth thing feature, depth effect things of, of, of things. So you don't need a face. Here, Apple is training the camera algorithm only for uh, faces. So this won't, definitely won't work if I'm taking a, a picture, picture of, a, of a device, for example. So if I do this, and here's no portrait at all. Now, the th other thing where we get less features is um, on the studio light thingy. We got, we got here the feature for studio light and uh, counter light. Let's check out the portrait features here. We got normal light, studio light, uh, the standard light thingy. Now, oh, now this, is, this is like the stage light and uh, black and white feature. So black and white and fade stage features are only available on the uh, X and XX uh, smartphones. So all the other th features are the same. Let's change over to the front facing camera. Oh, there's also, and this is nothing new because it's again a face and it's one lens and same feature as on the other devices. So this is a software thing we know from, ah, this is definitely, oh, and yes, even on the, um, uh, not even, also, <laughs> also on the, um, let's see, oh, edit, and now I have to swipe up, now it's loading, yes, and we also get the feature to change the aperture afterwards so that you can blur out the background uh, stronger or lighter. So all those features are still there. And if you don't care about a zoom lens, and if you don't care about the stepped effect for, for things, only for faces, and this is the thing where Apple camera is just fantastic, then you're still good to go with the iPhone XR. You don't need to upgrade to the XS. And yes, I know the main question a lot of people will ask themselves is, do I get an iPhone X from last year or do I get the XR from this year? So this said, we got camera, we got face ID, we got, I don't want to say speed. Oh, let's, let's start a little video here. And today's big Apple iPhone launch day yet again, because the new iPhones, the iPhone XR or XRs are starting today. And I grabbed the yellow version. I pre-ordered the red, the red edition, but then I was at the store and they had plenty of devices. So they let me switch colors. So speakers, we got stereo speakers, both sound okay. Nice audio quality and the first impression is great. And in terms of performance, I think the three gigabytes of RAM is sufficient. Oh, what about the one last thing because we don't got 3D touch. So you don't have this feature here that you um, just can push and press um, and get this haptic feedback um, to, to enable flashlight, but still it works. It's only like, like a long press here. Uh, you get the vibration, you get a haptic feedback, and then you just start the camera. So this is nothing else like, it's maybe not the same nice feeling here that 3D touch is giving you, but it still works. The other thing is, let's see if this will, if this will work here. So the other thing is that you could use uh, 3D touch to control your cursor or the blinking thingy there. But now if you just press long on the space bar, 
then this will be activated and then you can com control the, um, the, the cursor with your fingers. So no problem. And I personally don't think that I'm going to miss 3D Touch or that is really easy if you have used 3D Touch on previous devices. And I mean 3D Touch, we know this feature now since the iPhone 7 or 8, so a couple of years. And I don't really know why Apple is, uh, is getting rid of this here. Um, because, I mean, they had the space, this device is big enough, we got all the other features. And I mean, it's not that there wouldn't be enough room for, for the this, for this stuff here. But overall, first impression, it's, it's an iPhone. And the first impression, it's, it, it will be a fantastic iPhone. And the second impression here is that it definitely is a nice iPhone. So yes, you get the new iPhone. Don't think about too much about the screen, the resolution or the technology of the screen in comparison with all with the other devices. It's still a nice looking device, a fantastic screen. And I, first impression, yes, it's still a little bit not bulky, it's a little bit thick and a little bit heavy. But if this means that I get a good quality and a really long lasting battery life out of this, I'm willing to live with this. But this is it for now. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.